What's up guys? Welcome back to another eBay miniature rescue. Just wanted to let you know, I'm real tired of this. Not really. You'll see. So there I was at the beginning of my week, model picked out, an idea of where I wanted to go and luckily some time to do it, or so I thought. I found this model on eBay for a really good price. The paint job wasn't half bad, you know, it was a start at least, and a good place to jump off and finish this model. There were a few things that needed to be taken care of before putting paint down. So I checked the model over for gaps and mold lines. I filled the gaps and proceeded to cover up the new filler with some Badger Steinle Res primer. Now I just brushed right over the top of these problem areas and I just happened to have colors that were pretty close to the base coats anyway and you know, it looked nice. At this point, I was feeling pretty good about the process. I still had what I thought was a pretty solid plan and a way to get there. So let's go through some of the steps and find out what went terribly, terribly wrong. So I started off with some Liquitex Titanium White and I just put this over some of the areas that I really wanted to change the color of and just to brighten up with some filters and highlights that kind of thing my main focus was on the axe the top of the hangman's head and all of the ghostly ethereal bits now I really like the blue that was going on on this model but I wanted to punch that up with some of that kind of ghostly green that we'll get to later on and one of the main things I wanted to do was give this axe a really cool fluorescent pink kind of molten metal vibe. So I came in with this golden fluorescent pink and I just did a quick base coat over both sides of the axe. Then I came in with this golden quinan something or other red and I decided to give that a little bit of a boost. Now because I wanted this molten I wanted the outer edges to be a little bit darker than the center so that's pretty much where I focused this red. One of the really nice things about using this golden high flow transparent paint is that it's really pigmented and it mixes together really well, like really traditional paints would. So I decided to mix up this turquoise and start that process of making all of those ethereal pieces kind of fit together. Then I came in with some Citadel's Rhinox hide and I just decided to base coat all of the wood. Next up is Citadel's Gray Sear, which is gonna be a really nice base coat for the rope and all of the little straps. Now, the reason I'm going with a pretty white gray is that we're gonna end up tinting this later on with some other stuff. So I want it to be as bright as possible so that we can kind of get that like worn rope look after we put on some washes. Because we're gonna be coming in with a few more filter colors and glazes, things like that, I'm gonna pre-highlight a lot of these areas using Vallejo White. 
Now the idea behind doing this is that we're going to create the texture and highlights all over the model. And that way when we come in with those filter colors, it's gonna pick up that kind of maximum brightness of that white and give us kind of a free highlight. And I mean, it's not free, we still have to do the work, but we don't have to go in later with kind of matching highlight colors to highlight these areas. It just kind of does it automatically, which is pretty nice and saves a good amount of time. Now this is always a pretty fun thing to do. Now I wanted to create some chipping texture on this ax blade. So using Dove hairspray, we're just going to liberally coat that and then let it dry. That way when we come in with some other paints, we can start to chip that away and reveal that pink underneath. I'm gonna use AK Interactive Streaking Grime to make a nice dirty leather that will be his cloak. Now I'm going to start off with Rhinox Hide and cover that axe blade completely. And that way we have some kind of nice dark rusty bits left over after we strip that away. I'm also going to come in with a little bit lighter orange and just put that into the pot with that Rhinox Hide. And it's going to give us kind of a next step up for a little bit of rust variation. You're not really going to see a lot of it, but you know, it gives a little bit more depth into that Rhinox Hide. Then we're gonna come in with some odorless mineral spirits and start to remove a lot of this streaking grime and just give a real nice grungy, dirty look to the top of this hangman's cloak. You know, coming back and watching this now and doing a voiceover, I really start to see where some of these things could have gone better or, you know, areas where I should have stopped. And this is definitely one of them. The, the cloak looked pretty nice after taking just a little bit of that streaking grime away. And I mean, streaking grime in general is an art form of, you know, editing and removal. So it's something I really need to keep working on. Now at first, everything was going according to plan. Getting some nice colors on the model, setting up for some pretty fun techniques that would really bring this guy to life. And there are so many times when we paint models that we get to this stage. And really what it is are a series of questions that you need to ask. What kind of things are required to solve this particular puzzle or finish this model? A majority of these questions are pretty straightforward and not too difficult to answer. In this case, the questions weren't any more difficult than usual, but the answers, well, I didn't, I didn't choose good answers. So problems started to arise, leading to unfortunately having a pretty bad time painting. Now let's start to break down some of these issues. At first, the pink seemed like a really cool idea. I wanted it to be a super hot molten pink axe with chipping to show some rust and texture. Pretty cool, right? Could have been, yeah. But realistically, it just doesn't fit with the colors on this model. So in coming back to the model, after kind of thinking about it a little bit, I decided to go with this Waywatcher green glaze through the airbrush, and that was gonna be the punch to all of our white highlights. Now this gives a really nice ghostly tint to everything, and I actually quite like this particular color. So at least there was something going my way, mostly. And it came down to trying to push this model even a little bit further and to get a little bit darker with it. So I decided to go for some blood effects on the cloak and, you know, have it splash across the model just a little bit. And I, I did like the way that looked too. It was pretty dark and not the worst thing I've seen, but still 
We're getting into a place where too much is going on, the colors are clashing, and something has to be done. Now I decided to roll with it and try again. This time around I would use colors that match the scheme and would make a little more sense for this model. Here's where haste and impatience play a big factor in the way that this turns out. It was really at this point that I started to get pretty frustrated. You know, I don't have a ton of time to paint during the week, and you know, that includes taking video, editing video, and doing all of this stuff. So I was getting really frustrated, which means that I was becoming impatient and just trying to move as fast as I possibly could to get through this model. Now, I decided to kind of go with that molten theme again, only do more traditional and kind of have that like white hot in the center and it, you know, goes out to the edges and gets really dark. So I covered it up with white ink and just started over. And this didn't look terrible again, but because I was being impatient, I was making mistakes more than I needed to be. Okay, so it's better. It's not a finished model yet. There's still a few more things to do, but more on track for sure. Here again is why being impatient with a project can force you into an even bigger downward spiral. Look at the ethereal bits coming off of this blade. It's kind of a mess. And even I went, I went to my wife to see what she thought, hoping that she might have good news, but I kind of already knew the answer that she was gonna give. Now onto the third iteration of this model. Now there are some things that I like, the ghosts and pretty much all of the other ethereal stuff feels pretty good. You know, it feels like a ghost should for Age of Sigmar and to be honest, it mostly matches what I have going on so that I can play this model in a game of Age of Sigmar or Warcry. So I feel good about that, but the leather cloak and ax really need some help. Right in this moment is the perfect example of being, you know, impatient and trying to just go for it. After I put that white ink on those ethereal parts that hit those, that blade, I could have come back in with those filter colors, you know, that I already used, that teal and really light glaze green, and it probably would have fixed that problem. But again, because I was getting frustrated, because I was being impatient, I missed those opportunities. The answers were right in front of me and I didn't see them. Normally when I make a video, it's specifically about, you know, how to paint something, how to repair something, somewhere in the rescue area. Something I don't talk about as often as I probably could is how to deal with issues that aren't even model issues. They're, you know, personal issues that when it comes to actually painting, that these things come up. In some of my past videos, I've shown my mistakes. And I do that on purpose because, you know, a lot of people look at this and say, you know, you've been doing this for a long time and, you know, you just don't make mistakes anymore. And that's just not true. Everybody makes mistakes. Everybody paints, has a bad day and I'm certainly no exception. So I wanted to try and make this video to highlight, you know, no pun intended, that this is just something that happens from time to time. And to not get down about it, 
but to push forward and find something new to paint or just repaint the model if you really want to repaint it. Paint can come right off. You can throw it in a tub of cleaner, let it sit, think about what you would do differently and just try again. And there's certainly nothing wrong with that. And I plan on doing that eventually with this model, but I'm gonna let it sit for a little bit. Okay, so now we're in a pretty normal place for this model. Some good texture on the leather, some rust on the blade, transitioning into that kind of smoky ethereal bit, it's working out. The thing is, when I look at this model, all I see are my mistakes. And that's both a good thing and a bad thing. The model is, by all intents and purposes, fully playable. It isn't well done, you know, but it works. Here's the thing. A painted model is much better than gray plastic, no matter what the condition is. I don't feel good about this paint job, but it's only paint. I can strip it and start again, or turn my eye to the next model and use this one as a reminder of things I need to work on. Not every model you paint will be the best. There will be times when things just don't go your way and that's okay. Pick up another model and try again. Remember your mistakes and try and plan for them. Every mistake gets you closer to being the kind of painter you actually wanna be. Thank you for joining me on another eBay Miniature Rescue. If you like something about this video, please consider liking, sharing, and subscribing as it really helps out the channel. Once again, I'm Casey, and I will see you in the next video. I mean, you didn't actually think I was gonna break it, did you?